So today we're going to be uh, talking about the installation of the uh, firewall forward kit and the exhaust on the 912 uh, IS engine here on the Sling 2. So there's just a few things that I wanted to clarify that aren't really spelled out in the drawings or the manual. Uh, so basically what we have here is we have our firewall forward kit, the exhaust system, because that's what we're going to be doing. We just uh, briefly mounted this engine here and uh, now we're going to get into the uh, configuration and the mounting of the exhaust. So when you get your 912 IS engine uh, from the airplane factory or Rotax, it's going to come with these uh, fittings on here. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to take these off um, and we're just going to discard these. You're not going to need these for your far firewall forward kit. There's going to be a total of four of them. Uh, but one thing you want to do is you want to save these nuts because we have to keep those nuts. Um, so basically uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take and install the header tubes here that we have and one thing that you want to do is you want to pay att close attention to the configuration that they're in. Uh, an upgrade that the airplane factory has now is they've uh, took these flanges and they're now manufacturing them a little thicker uh, than the old Rotax ones are so they're a lot more uh, s stiff and strong. Uh, another thing that they're doing is labeling these left hand right hand and that's really important when you're trying to fit your cowling uh, and that's something I'm going to point out. So you have your left hand and your right hand uh, as you can see one is slightly longer than the other. Uh, the one that goes on the left side is going to be mounted uh, left which is the shorter one and basically you just kind of slide that in here and uh, put that into your engine. So the shorter one on the left hand side and the longer one, it's about an inch longer, is going to go on your right hand side. Um, so that'll just kind of fit in right there. And we'll mount those with the nuts that we took off that came with the Rotax engines. Um, so those go right into there. Uh, another thing is, is when you're mounting this, uh, right after you um, mounted your engine, uh, it's a lot easier to do this now, is the two aft, or the two bottom bolts here, uh, we're going to cut those off about an inch. Uh, and leave the two or three threads that are showing uh, so that way they don't interfere with your exhaust and muffler uh, in a little bit here. So we're going to, with the die grinder cut off real, we're going to cut these off so they don't interfere. So now that we've installed uh, temporarily our header pipes, all four of them, uh, we kind of left them loose so that way they can move freely. Uh, because the next step is going to be installing these as well. Um, and one thing that we want to do is uh, we want to trim these down roughly starting with a number of 20 millimeters on each edge uh, because what these do is these plug into the muffler here and uh, they slide in there. But if they're too long, like they currently are, uh, they're going to interfere with the cowling that's along the bottom. So this kind of, that puts it out like this and uh, it'll touch the cowling. So you want a lot of good clearance there. So what we're going to do, as you can see, there's a uh, left hand, right hand. We're going to take these and we're going to slide these in just like this. Then we're going to take our spring, all, uh, all the springs, and we're going to mount them. And it's still be, going to be kind of loose so that way we can mount it to our muffler. And our muffler is going to mount on the bottom just like this. And like I had mentioned before, these uh, screws that are in the, uh, the bolts that are on the bottom, We've trimmed those off so that way they don't interfere or touch the exhaust muffler here. Because um, if you don't, they will touch it when it's all in the, inside there. The other thing that we're going to do that's part of your firewall forward kit is we're going to mount, um, if you can come over here, mount the rubber uh, onto the engine mount. Uh, and when you get the, the rubber mount, it comes as a piece of tubing. But the tubing that's here is a little smaller than the inside diameter of that, so we want to cut off roughly a half inch so that way you know there's clearance. Otherwise the tube would be too large there. And we're going to install this just like you see it with the hose clamps here. And your muffler uh, is installed on this bracket here, so we're going to go ahead and do that. So what we've done is we've uh, cut the ends of these down like we mentioned, the 20 millimeters. Uh, we put our clamps on, and again everything is still loose and we slid these into there. So we basically what we're going to do is now is fit this into the uh, aircraft and make sure that it ne is where it needs to be because the next step is installing this heat shield here. Um, we've obviously mounted uh, these items onto this and uh, basically we have to get this rotation and clocked properly uh, before we ri rivet it onto that. So that's kind of what we're doing now. So basically what we're doing is we're going to, you have your exhaust uh, pipe tube here on the left hand side of the aircraft and one thing that we did is we uh, mounted 
you know, our blue rubber, like we mentioned, uh, put the hose clamps on it, and we've actually cut off about uh, 40 millimeters off this hose clamp, just so it kind of uh, is neater and cleaner. So what we're going to do, and again, this is pushed all the way to the left side against this rail here, uh, not touching, but close to it, and we're uh, able to move that so that way we can put it up on our exhaust. And basically what we're doing is we're going to set it up in here, just like this, uh, and we're going to put these guys in, just like you see here, and uh, put them into there. And we're doing uh, two things, we're getting the uh, position of this bracket that's going to hold the exhaust uh, where it needs to be. Now that it's where it needs to be, we're going to tighten that down. And also we're kind of marking this here where we're going to put this. So the next step would be mounting this to the, the muffler and clocking this properly. So what we've done now is we temporarily mounted this and we have it clocked basically first uh, to where we want our exhaust tail pipe to, to go. Um, so that kind of is out of the way in the right direction and the spring isn't hitting the engine mount at all So that's where that needs to be. So now that we have established where the muffler goes um, We're basically going to take our heat shield for our heat and we're going to put it in here And what we're going to do is we're going to clock it so that way the air intake is uh, in the right direction And what establishes that and determines that is in the back if you want to come over here and kind of look at this so basically what we're looking for is we're looking for this to be uh, not in the way of the engine mount. We don't want to line it up, uh, and that's a mistake that a lot of people make, is uh, lining it up like this, and then there's no room for your tube. So we want to clock it just like that so it goes through this opening and is uh, able to uh, get intake there. And all we do is we take and we just mark a line here so that way when we pull this back off, we know where to drill the rivets into the exhaust. Um, and what we use to temporarily uh, put the um, springs on is the springs that we're going to actually mount this with, but I use this hook here because what we don't want to do is we don't want to use pliers on the spring and uh, gouge the spring at all because that will create stress cracks and then later down the road when your engine's running it will break the springs, so we don't want to do that. So what we're going to do now is rivet this heat shield on and uh, put the clamps on for the exhaust and mount everything uh, on permanently. So we're just going to wrap up the uh, installation here of the exhaust. As you can see, uh, we've mounted it now permanently. We've tightened and torqued all of our uh, nuts here to the uh, header pipes. Uh, we've attached all of our springs with the uh, gasket maker that kind of just takes away from the vibration and the singing of the springs and doesn't allow them to break. Uh, another thing that I did is I uh, took an old piece of fire sleeve and I mounted it around this engine mount here uh, just to keep it from vibrating and hitting there and deteriorating the uh, exhaust there. Uh, if you come around to the front here, uh, you can see that we mounted our exhaust, our, our heat shield here is on, everything's torqued and uh, verified, uh, just like that. And like I mentioned before in the video, uh, rec recently and earlier, uh, this bolt, um, see how we cut that bolt down? Uh, now we have clearance there for that, and then the heat tube has uh, a way to go through the engine mount there. One thing that I also wanted to mention, when you get a Rotax engine, uh, right from Rotax or the airplane factory, it's going to have the EGT probes um, on it, just like you see. But what a lot of people uh, don't understand or are not aware of is it looks like it's not going to fit into the uh, mounting hole for the exhaust header here. So basically all you got to do to accommodate that is you pop it off of the engine and you spin it around and what that does is it lengthens uh, the wire so that way it allows you to put it in so then you use your high temperature anti-seize the copper uh, put it on the threads and then you slide it in and then tighten it to these specifications in the Rotax manual so you'll do that on all four um, like this one and then you know, you'll tighten everything down and that should be good so that's basically how you Install the uh, Rotax 912 IS exhaust uh, with the firewall forward kit on a Sling 2.